hydrocarbons from Earth's crust. Hydrocarbons from Earth's crust. Since the beginning of the 20th century, man has used hydrocarbons from the Earth's crust as a way natural gas, petroleum, and coal. Do you remember how they were formed? Well, from 300 to 400 million years ago, tiny plants and animals died and were buried at the ocean floor. Over time, they were covered by layers of silt and sand. Between 50 to 100 million years ago, over millions of years, the remains were buried deeper and deeper. The enormous heat and pressure turned them into oil and gas. Today we drill down through layers of sand and silt and rock to reach the rock formations that contain oil and gas deposits. Comparing petroleum and natural gas density, which one would you expect to be on top and which one would you expect to be at the bottom in a cave? Yes, you're right. Natural gas will be on top and petroleum will be at the bottom. Natural gas is an important source of alkanes of low molecular mass as methane, ethane, propane and butane. Also, natural gas is an excellent source of helium. Natural gas main components. As we already mentioned, there is methane, ethane, propane and butane. What kind of reaction is usually methane related to? Yes, you're right, it's combustion because it burns with a hot, clean flame. Now, which of these two flames shows a good methane combustion with oxygen? Well, the one in, in the left is the one in blue is the correct one. The one in the right hand side is the incorrect one. Now, ethane, propane and butane are also used as a source of energy but usually are carried in liquid state using high pressure. Once petroleum or crude oil is extracted, it needs to be subjected to a refining process which starts with distillation of petroleum into fractions according to its boiling point. Refining them, you are going to obtain gases, gasoline, aviation fuel, heating oil, diesel fuel, naphtha, grease and wax, and asphalt. Some crude oil products are back again subjected to additional process called cracking, where hydrocarbons are broken or rearranged into smaller and most useful molecules. This is a process of crude oil refining. Now, from the gasoline that we buy, usually there is a 44% that's the cost of the crude oil. 15% is the refining, 8% is distribution and marketing, and finally we pay like 33% or more of taxes. Now, let's turn to coal. Which are the three factors that contribute in coal formation process? And if you take a look at the right hand side, that will be heat, pressure, and time. Now, products derived from coal. Coal can either have solid residues, like that is called coke, or hot vapors. From the hot vapors, you can have insoluble gases like coal gas or condensed liquid, like li liquor of ammonia and coal tar. Now, what do you think are the main factors that determine coal quality? Well, there are three of them. The first one is heat content, the coal content, and finally, the sulfur dioxide emissions. The more heat content it has and the less sulfur dioxide emissions will have, will be better. So as you can see in the graph, it turns from left to right into a better quality coal. Thank you for watching.